Hi, my name is Miss Charters, or you can call me Holly. So I am a qualified primary school teacher, um, originally from the UK, um, and I am qualified to teach ages five up to the age of 11. Um, I also have taught English in the past um, to foreign children, um, and English is my specialist subject, as that's what I did a degree in. I'm currently living in Australia, in Sydney, um, and hoping to do some more teaching uh, children abroad. So today I'm going to teach you all about homophones. So I'm going to bring up my screen and the presentation. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, so today we are looking at the homophones, which are there, there, and there. Um, hands up who has ever been confused by these different spellings and when to use them. I definitely have. So, what is a homophone? Has anybody ever heard of the word homophone before? Any ideas of what the word homophone could mean? So, Homophone actually means, homo means the same, and phone means sound. So homophone together, the same sound. So it's words with the same sound, but they look different. So you can see here, we've got right and right. So they sound the same, right, right, but they look different because the first one has, starts with an R and the second one starts with a W. And then we have another one, C and C. I can see you with two E's or the C as in the C by the beach, which has an E-A. Then we've got hair, like the hair on my head, which is H-A-I-R. And we've got hair as in the animal, hair, H-A-R-E. So who can tell me again, what is a homophone? See if you can look at the image and tell me what a homophone is. So it's the same sound, but they look different. Okay, fantastic. So can anyone think of any homophones of their own? Let's see if we can share our ideas. Okay, so today we're gonna to be looking at three homophones, which are there, there, and there. So again, these words all sound the same, but they're spelt differently, or they look different when you, when you read them. And they all have different meanings as well. So we're going to be looking at there, which is T-H-E-I-R, there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, and there, T-H-E-Y. And who knows what this is, this piece of punctuation? Yeah, it's an apostrophe. So we've got T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. Okay, so let's go to the first one. So this is the first one there. Now who notices anything interesting about the word there? Who can notice something interesting? Yeah, so what you can see is you've got a little person who is representing the eye, okay? So the reason for that being is that there is a possessive adjective. So that means that it shows ownership or belonging. So something that you own, we use the word there. So for example, their lunch was very tasty. Okay, the there represents that it's somebody's possession. Okay, so their lunch was very tasty. Then we've got the children are wearing their school uniform. So the children own their school uniform, it's their belongings. So we use the word there, T H E I R. And the way that you can remember that is by remembering the little person that represents the I, because it's to do with a person's belongings, okay? A possessive adjective, which is all about you and what you own. So you can think about the word there that's to do with possession with the little person that represents the I, T-H-E-I-R, okay? So can anyone think of their own sentences that might use the word there, T-H-E-I-R. Let's have a look, see if somebody can tell me their ideas. Yep, so we could have 
it was their coat that works okay she ate sorry they ate their apples that would work as well what else have we got let's have a think their candle was burning brightly that would work as well okay it's to do with ownership there perfect the second one is there as in t-h-e-r-e -E. so a little bit of a different spelling t-h-e-r-e -E. so who can notice something interesting about the word that i've got there yes that's correct so there is an arrow so you can see an arrow in the middle that represents the R. So that is, will help you remember this spelling as well. The T-H-E-R-E, -E, and this is to do with a place or a position, okay? So this there tells you where something is placed or, or the position of that thing. And that, the reason for the arrow is you can imagine pointing, it's over there, it's over there, it's over there, okay? And that's why, how you can remember it with the arrow that represents that R and then we have the E at the end. So the children are playing over there. There is an aeroplane in the sky. Can you think of some of your own sentences using there? T-H-E-R-E. -E. Yep, so we could have over there is my book. Okay, we could have Look over there, said mum. Yeah, that's another one. Or we could say, there is a clown in my classroom. That would work as well. Okay, so this one shows where something is, a position. So you can remember T-H-E-R-E -E, and then the arrow represents the R. Okay, so the next one we're gonna look at is there. Okay, so there is a contraction. Who knows what a contraction is? So a contraction is a word which is made up of two words and they are then put together, okay? And the missing letter is represented by an apostrophe. Who can point out the apostrophe? It's correct, so it is after the Y and before the RE, okay? That's what we call an apostrophe. So a contraction, two words that are put together, Okay, and it contains an apostrophe which represents the missing letter. Now, who can tell me what the missing letter is in there? So we can see the word they. Okay, and what's it short for there? Yep, it's short for they are. So who can tell me what the letter is that's missing? It's got there. Yeah, that's correct. It's an A. So the apostrophe actually takes the place of the A, okay? So the two words are they are, and then they are put together, okay, to make a contraction. And the missing letter, the letter that's taken out is the A, which is replaced by an apostrophe, okay? So we've got this there, okay, which is a little bit different to the other two because there is an apostrophe in this one. So this is short of say, short way of saying they are. So you've just got to think, of the sentence that you are saying and think about whether they are would fit in there. So, they're playing a game together, they are playing a game together, makes sense, okay? They're running around the track, they are running around the track, okay? Let's see if we can think of some of them. Your own. Okay, so if we can think, think of some of our own. So, let's have a think. Yeah, so we could have they are flying their kites. Yeah, that would work. There's two types of there in that in that sentence actually. So the first there, they are flying their kites. So what who can tell me what the two what the two types of there would be? So we could have, let me see if I can bring up my let's have a look, see if I can bring up my here we go. Okay. So we could have How would we spell they are, as in they are flying their kites? Yeah, so it would be they. Yeah, apostrophe R E, they are flying. Now, what would the next there be? Let's try and have a think. Would it be they are again? They are fly, flying, they are kites? Hmm, that wouldn't work, would it? So it's either T H E R 
E, which remember means a position, or it's T H E I R, and remember that it's what belongs to you, so your belongings. So what are we talking about here? They are flying their kites. Does that kite belong to them? Yeah, correct, it does so. We would use they are flying their, T-H-E-I-R, their kites. Okay, perfect, that's really good. Um, and then I want you now to have a think of how you could use there, there, and there, okay, in your own sentences, okay? So we've just done that one together, okay? So I want you to now think of some of your own sentences. So we're gonna move on. I can stop this. Let's have a look. Okay. So we're going to now have a think of our own sentences. Let's see if we can delete this. No. Okay, so we're going to now think of some of our own sentences using there, there, and there, and then the challenge, can you write a sentence using all three? Okay, I'm gonna set you off on your task, so off you go. Okay, so now let's feed back and let's see what sentences we've come up with. So the first one, T-H-E-R-E, you can tell me their sentence. So we've got, there is a brown cow. Perfect, that's really good. Who's got one for T-H-E-I-R? Who's got one for that one? It was their birthday. Fantastic, yeah. So that birthday belongs to them, so it works, so it was their birthday. Lovely, and then we've got T-H-E-R-E. Sorry, it just should be T H E I there. Okay. There feeling hungry. Perfect, that works as well. They are short for they are. Lovely. And who has managed to write a sentence using all three? Yeah, so we could have they, there using their pens over there. Great, that works so well, fantastic. Um, and now I want you to see if you can listen to my sentences. So you need to listen very carefully and you need to think about which there it is. And you're going to write the sentence with the correct spelling. So the first sentence is, it was their coat. Okay, it was their coat. Okay, so the second one would be she is over there. She is over there. Okay, so have a think about which one you'd use for that one. And then we have they are going to school. They are going to school. Okay. So again, have a think about that one. All right. And then we'll feed back and see. So the first one, who got the answer for that one? Yeah, correct. And the second one, let's just see if we can write it down actually. Okay. So the first one, was T-H-E-I-R, yeah. 
The second one was T-H-E-R-E, and the last one, T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. Fantastic, great work. So today we have learned all about homophones. Who can tell me what homophones were again? Yep, they are words that sound the same, but they look different or they're spelt differently. Fantastic. Okay, and who can give me an example of a homophone? Yeah, so we could have two and two and two. Yes, three different homophones there. Okay, we've also got C and C. Great. Um, and we've also got there, there and there, which we've learned about today. Now, who can tell me what, how you spell the there as in there is a cat? Yep, it's T-H-E-R-E. Perfect. And we remember we've got that R that represents the arrow that's pointing to the E at the end. Okay. Uh, and then we've got how do we spell the there as in it was their cat? It was their cat. Yep, that's correct. So that'd be T H E I R. And that's to do with possession. And you remember the little I as a I, as in you. Okay. And then we've got the last one, which would be they are going to the shops so yeah you can tell me that one yep so it'd be they apostrophe re yep going to the shops okay and they are uh, is a you can tell me what that word was which means there's two words and they're put together to make one word yep so that was what we call a contraction perfect and who can remember what represents the missing letter so they are is then turned into their what, is, what represents that missing letter? Yeah, you're correct, it's an apostrophe. So the apostrophe takes the place of the A. Fantastic. And that was the end of the lesson. So thank you so much for listening today. Okay, um, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, bye.